Hello, this is going to be my last video about swine flu. Promise. I shouldn't cross my fingers when I promise things. I'm going to be talking about mercury, formaldehyde, squalene, aluminum, and if anyone wants to bring something up, then feel free. Mercury. Flu shots contain a molecule known as thimerosal. Thimerosal has mercury in it, but it's not the kind of mercury you're thinking of. The mercury that's known as a neurotoxin and causes mercury poisoning is methyl mercury. That's what is the problem with mercury poisoning in Japan and areas like that. Thimerosal is broken down into ethyl mercury. Ethyl mercury is not methyl mercury. And to emphasize this point, methanol is not ethanol. What's the difference? Methanol is what you see in windshield washer fluid. Ethanol is the it's the fun one, yes! <laughs> the difference between the two, one kills you a lot faster. Methyl and ethyl are two completely different molecules. Do not confuse them. Methyl mercury is pretty bad for you, it's a neurotoxin. Ethyl mercury, generally fine for you. It clears out a lot faster than methyl mercury. Furthermore, the LD50 of thimerosal is 4,000 milligrams per kilogram. The amount of thimerosal in a vaccine is 25 micrograms. That's 0 0.025 milligrams. That's 1 160,000th the amount as what is considered a lethal dose. Formaldehyde. Why do our vaccines contain formaldehyde? It's actually a pretty good question. Formaldehyde is used to deactivate the virus, and how it does it is it essentially just damages viral RNA and the virus cannot reproduce once it's been injected into the human body. The formaldehyde in the vaccine is just residual formaldehyde that was used when deactivating the virus. The interesting thing is, the amount of formaldehyde you'll get from a vaccine is less than you naturally have in your body right now. So you can freak out about it as much as you want, but you've already got formaldehyde in you. It's just there. Yes, formaldehyde can cause Gulf War Syndrome in far higher quantities, but the amount you'll get in the vaccine is nothing to worry about. Squalene! What do you need to know about squalene? Squalene is produced naturally by your liver. Uh, actually, let me, let me just read you an entertaining message I got. Uh, this comes in halfway through. Also, yes, squalene is naturally produced in the body and is even derived from olives. It is very beneficial to the body if it is found in areas like the brain or other organs, not if it's in the bloodstream. If any trace of it is found in the bloodstream, the immune system starts making antibodies to it, causing all sorts of problems. Bonus points to anyone who can figure out what's wrong with that statement right off the bat. How did the squalene get to the brain or to any of the other organs from the liver or when you've ingested it through olives or anything like that? It went through your bloodstream. <sighs> Finally, just to put it into context, the LD50 of squalene, what's considered a lethal dose of squalene, is 5,000 milligrams per kilogram. And to put that into contrast, the LD50 for table salt, NaCl, sodium chloride, is 3,000 milligrams per kilogram. You will die sooner from taking in the same amount of salt than you will from squalene. Aluminum. Aluminum is present in a vaccine in the form of aluminum salts, which really just help the immune system catch on to the virus faster. Again, this is just one of those things, it's in such a minute concentration. You get more aluminum from drinking a can of pop or a beer or something than you will from unvaccination. It's nothing to be concerned about. You contain far more aluminum than what is in a vaccine. You'll be fine. Oh, and I'll just mention this really quick. Uh, thimerosal doesn't cause autism. There is no study linking autism to thimerosal. You can check the video link right here. That's to James Randi, Educational Foundation, talking about thimerosal and autism. Let me go over one more thing, the notion of a live virus in the vaccine. First off, viruses are never counted to be alive, they just aren't defined as such. Or the swine flu vaccination does contain a live virus, so to speak, but as I've already mentioned, the formaldehyde in the vaccine makes it so the virus can't reproduce. So a vaccine injects the virus into the body, it's deactivated, 
and then the body will produce antibodies against the antigen of the virus and then you'll become immune because you'll have these antibodies already stored so that the next time you get infected with the real thing your antibody response is much quicker and on top of that produces far more. That's how vaccines work. Cheers! Think about it.